Are you wondering how to use Smartsheet automation? Well, if that's the case, then you've come to the right place because in this video, I'm gonna be showing you exactly how you can leverage this particular functionality in Smartsheet. Now, as you can see here, I have loaded up a project plan to demo automation in Smartsheet. We're gonna be creating various different automations and I'll also be sharing some best practices that I've learned over seven years of using Smartsheet along the way as well. So before we begin and set up these automations and I show you how to go through the process, I just wanna share with you the columns that we have in this sheet because it's gonna be really, really important to the automations that I demo to you. So we've got task name, status, assigned to, a couple of date columns, so start and end date, percentage complete, duration and predecessors. Now that's one thing that I'd recommend that you do ahead of building any aut automations is just ensure that you have the right data in your sheet before you begin. So that could be you need to introduce new columns. It may be you need to rename them. Just be mindful of the columns that you have and the data that you are capturing. So as an example, you may need to introduce some date columns if you don't have them already. Nevertheless, when it comes to using Smartsheet automation, once you're in the sheet that you want to set that automation on, so as you can see, I'm in here now, you then click on automation in the tab at the top, at which point you'll be presented with a couple of options. As you can see, we don't have any automations built in this particular sheet as is. We're gonna be building them out. But if you did, you can access them via this particular cog icon here. Let me just press that and it'll show you. It says there's no workflows yet, so we need to build a new one, okay? But if you did have some, they would be listed there. At which point, let us walk through how we can start creating automations. You have two different options. You can create one from scratch and run through the builder, and I will be doing that in due course. But what I'd recommend that you do and explore is that you create an automation from template. And that's purely because Smartsheet have pre-built a lot of these automations just so that you can get set up and running as quickly as possible. Now, if you click create from template, you'll be presented with all of these different options. They've been kind of categorized into different areas. So we've got popular templates, notifications and reminders, document generation, sheet to sheet workflows, update and approval requests and sheet changes. So I recommend just kind of scrolling through here and looking what's available. But let me just, I mean, the popular ones, these are the ones that you're you're probably going to be looking for or using. And there's more as well. Obviously, if you create from scratch, you can create some that aren't listed here. But as I say, these are just here for us to leverage from the outset. So alert someone when specified criteria are met. Remind someone on a specific date. Move a row to another sheet when spe specified criteria are met. So that's really good for archiving and request an update every week. So that could be for the project manager um, to update this project plan as an example. But let me just quickly go back to our sheet. So let's just say uh, we've got a status column in progress and we've got a percentage complete. Well, let's just say when it hits 100% or the status is complete, we notify someone. Okay, that's the first automation we're going to set up. So automation, we're going to go create from template, alert someone when specified criteria are met. Now, if you press that automation here, it will give you some recommended ways to use it and also more importantly, how to use this template. So it walks you through what you need to do. But I'm gonna now do that in real time. So the first thing that I recommend that you do is give it a, a title. So at the top here, make it, you know, differentiate it from other automations and just make it really clear exactly what that automation is. That way, if you need to deactivate or delete that automation further down the line, you'll know what that automation is referring to. I have made that mistake before. But let's just call this 100% slash complete automation alert, something like that. So the trigger, you have four different options. When a date is reached, when rows are added or changed, when rows are changed or when rows are added. Now for this particular example, it's gonna be when rows are changed. Now I mentioned that I want two fields here, so I'm gonna select them. It was the status and also the percentage complete, but you could have any field or you could choose certain ones like I'm going to. So it was status, Specify another change or when percentage complete. So when status changes to complete or when percentage complete changes to 100%, we then choose when we want the workflow to run. So we want it to be when it's triggered. You could set it as an hourly, daily or weekly cadence. And then you need to basically work through this part. So what we once this is met, once this criteria is met, what happens? 
So, and I've put, put that in wrong, haven't I? So what we want here is alert someone. So you can so select this drop down here. You can send to specific people, send to contacts in a cell. So that would be if you had a, a, a column in the sheet, as an example, that was a contact list, you could use that. You could send to everyone shared on the sheet, can be useful. You can send to Microsoft Teams or send to Slack if you're using those and have those integrated with Smartsheet. But I'm going to do send to specific people and I'm going to do it to myself, okay? You, these are everyone in my account, um, but I'm just going to do myself for now. And then what you can do is you can customize the message. So this is the email subject headline. It will come through as an email. So I could just be something like um, project, no, I could, sorry. Uh, project alpha, project plan, task complete. And then I could say something like, uh, please review this project plan. We have a task complete. And then at which point we could, the message can, you can select, the message can include link to the sheet in all fields, which I recommend, links to sheet and specified fields, which sometimes doesn't give you enough data to work on, so I don't recommend that, or just a message only. At which point hit save. And this automation is now running and live. It says when it was last modified. Now, if I was to go back into the sheet and then press on, press on automate automation, you'll see this has gone from zero to one. So when I mentioned earlier that you can manage automations that have already been set up from this interface, if I click on this, you will now see you'll be greeted with this, okay? At which point, if we wanted to, if we wanted to go in and edit that particular automation, you just press the edit button and it will take you back to that sheet. As an example, let's just say, I wanted to remove that part of it. Take that off and then hit save. So that's now been updated. The other things you can do is hit this little drop down here. You can deactivate it, which is really useful if you may want to use it in the future, but it's not useful at the particular moment in time. So you can always leverage it in the future. You can run it now. You can test it as well. These are really, really useful if you want to know if your automations have been set up optimally. Edit does the same thing as the edit button. You can duplicate it. So what I could Sometimes, you know, maybe you just want to change a couple of different elements of the automation. Sometimes it's a good idea to duplicate it and just work from the duplicate, save yourself a little bit of time. You can unsubscribe from it and you can delete it as well. And then there's a properties button as well, which just talks about, you know, when it was created by who. So that's our first automation. So I've walked you through leveraging a template. So let's just run, do another one. Remind someone on a specific date. So use this template. So this is going to be, let's just say, um, review the project plan. That's going to be at set date. That's going to be the name of this. So when a date is reached, then you can specify how often you want it to run. It could be one day after the specified date, two days after, three days after, four days after, etc. one week, two weeks, 30 days, six days, all of these options here. What I'm going to do here is when the date is reached and we can, we're going to run it. Sorry, I'm going to run it on, on the date. You can have it to run once or you can even customize it. So you could run it every day, every week, every month, every year. It's completely up to you. Let's just say I want it to repeat every day for seven days. So this project manager, if they haven't updated it on the set date, they're going to be reminded to do so for seven days afterwards. That's basically what I'm setting up here. It's going to start today. So it's the 30th, 30th of September 2024 at time of recording. And it's never going to end at the, the way I want to set this up. This is the time that they're going to receive the alert. So always a good idea to put in a time that works for the individual who's going to need to conduct this particular task. The conditions. So we are going to look at, let's just say, uh, if the end date is, and then you choose this option. So if the end date is, I'm going to put in the past. That makes sense for this particular use case. So when a date is reached, if it's in the past, alert someone. So again, I'm just going to put myself in here. So let's just run through this again. So when a date is reached at 1 p.m. US Pacific time, we're going to get this triggered. Well, sorry, we're going to get the notification every seven days after that date if the end date is in the past. So if any task is in the past, we are going to get an update for seven days. Hit save. And we now have a second automation. So that's how you can leverage another kind of template. I'll do one more and then we'll do a from scratch as well. So request an update every week. This is probably likely what you're going to want to use. So let's just say um, update request for, let's put my name in here. So when update request, so we're going to do when a date is reached, makes most sense for an update request. 
So we want it to be every week on Monday starting today. Yeah, we want an update on this project plan every week. That makes sense. We're going to leave all that in place, hit done. Select field, what conditions. So this is going to be update request. We are going to put in, put in the end date again, just leave it than that. If it's greater than that, excellent. So yeah, that looks good to me. Or what we could do, we've got other options here. We could, let me just I've run through this. You sometimes can click otherwise. So yeah, this is a different action. We don't want that actually at the moment. I want to delete this off. I don't want that at the moment. So conditions. So when, no, let's change this. I'm not going to do a date. Trigger. When I'm going to change this completely. This is an update request for this. I'm going to change this now. I'm going to change this. What we're going to do is instead of a date being reached is when rows are changed. So when assigned to changes to any value. So when rows are changed, assigned to to any value. When it changes to, I'll put those two in here. We don't want that extra condition, request an update. So basically what I've set up here is if someone is added in the assigned to column, they are going to be notified that they need to provide an update request. So I'll show you that in a second. So this is going to be Jeremy Williams and example name. Customized message. Um, we need an update. Now the, the message I'm going to put is, you have been assigned to a task on the project alpha project plan, please provide an update ASAP. That's what we're going to put in this example. And then I'm going to hit all fields and then I'm going to hit save. So the way this is one or more recipients are blocked. Uh, okay. That's only because the way that this individual has been set up in my account, hit save. So basically the, what this automation does is if someone was to be, if as an example, I might have to hit refresh. Yeah. I'm going to hit refresh. Some reason I was being blocked out from accessing that sheet. But the way I've set up that automation is that if the individual is assigned in the assigned to column, they're going to get up an, up, uh, an alert to say that we need an update request. So put myself in there. They're going to get an update request. That's the way I set up that automation. So I've walked you through various different automations leveraging the templates. If you did want to create one from scratch, it's very, very simple to do. You just press this create from scratch button, give it a name. So test automation, just call it that for now. Again, I spelled something incorrectly. You just run through the, the options. Now, when it, you use create from scratch, you're going to have so much more flexibility from the outset because you can tap into every different potential possibility. So again, you're always going to have these options as the triggers. These are always going to be what you choose from. I'm going to do when rows are changed for now. I might have to re review that later. We're going to leave the field as this for now. What I want to show you, and also is when it's triggered, I, I want all of that in place. What I want to show you are all the different actions that can happen upon that trigger. So we can alert someone. We've seen that before. We can alert a Microsoft Teams channel, alert a stack channel. Generate document. I've briefly discussed that. We've done update and approval request. Sheet changes. These, this is really interesting. Assign people. We can add people to tasks and other work items. That can be really handy. So as an example, if a particular task completed, we could assign someone to the next task automatically with this automation. We can change the cell value so that as an example, if you updated the status column to complete it, it can automatically, an automation can be set up to automatically move the percentage complete column to 100%. So you only have to do something once. That's an example of the change cell value. You can record a date. You can clear the cell value. You can lock down rows. You can unlock rows. You can also move rows and copy rows to other sheets as well. So this can be really good if you've got some kind of archiving in place. So there's lots of options that you can do here. Um, let me just... Let me just do this. So lock rows as an example. So for this example, when rows are changed, so let's go, let's just keep things as simple as possible for the purpose of this video. So when status changes to complete, let's use that example again, when triggered, lock the rows. So once that task is complete, nobody can come in and start changing elements of that 
row. Makes sense. Hit save. And we now have that in here. So if we go back to our sheet, I'm going to hit, by the way, the notification, you see that here appearing here? You have been assigned to a task on the Project Alpha project plan. Please provide an update ASAP. Do you remember that was a customized message I set up? That's because I assigned myself here. Do you remember? That's what that is all about. And I will have an email as well about that. Anyway, let me just I'm gonna hit refresh. Let me share this lock one with you or show you it in action. I could have done that run automation or test automation that I showed you in the manage uh, automation workflows tab. So I could have done this is what I'm talking about. I could have done this and I could have done, uh, where are we? This one, isn't it? See, this is what I mean by it. This isn't a good enough description of the automation. It's a bit confusing for me. I should have called this lock when complete. In fact, let me do that now. Lock task when complete or lock row makes more sense. Lock row when complete. So that makes more sense to me now. What I could do is I could hit test now or run now if I wanted to test it out. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to test it out in the sheet. So let me just refresh one more time. And I need to change something to complete. Let's have a little look. Let me change this to, let's change the project. Yeah, we're not locked at the moment. So let's change this to complete and hit save. You'll see that view pending update requests for that row. That's one of the automations that I set up. Now, hopefully this locks. So it hasn't right away. Sometimes there is a little bit of a lag. So bear that in mind. Let me just change quite a few of these to complete and see if that works. So at the moment, these aren't locked. Yeah, sometimes just, just be mindful that it can take a while for automations to come through, even though the trigger was right away. You just have to sometimes be a little bit patient. Yeah, it's not come through at the moment. I reckon if I was to, let me just put this test. In which case, it hasn't come through. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check that workflow one more time to make sure we've got everything OK. So when rows are changed, when the status changes to complete, run the workflow when triggered, lock rows. We're all good. This should be working. OK, so I'm going to hit save. What I'm going to do now is go back. What we'll do now is we'll go here and we'll run the test. So sometimes you have to do this as well. So run now. Trigger workflow on the entire sheet. Run workflow. Workflow ran successfully. Let's run back to the sheet, hit refresh, and hopefully all of these will now be locked. Sometimes there is a bit of a lag, but yeah, there you go, all come through. So yeah, as I say, sometimes there's a bit of a lag, but it doesn't mean the automation isn't working. Sometimes you have to refresh, sometimes you just have to wait a little bit. So just bear that in mind, okay? That's something to be mindful of. But anyway, that is how to use Smartsheet automation. I hope this video is useful. If you have any questions about a particular automation, want to know how to set up a, a, a certain type of automation, let me know down below. And with that said, best of luck, and I hope you have an excellent day.